Hi everyone, welcome to Anu's classroom. In today's video, we are continuing with um, our discussion on quantitative techniques for managerial applications and we will be tackling or trying to understand decision theory in this video. So by the end of this video, I we will be covering about the basic concepts of decision theory, certain key issues in decision theory. We will learn about marginal analysis, the decision tree approach, preference theory and a few other approaches in decision making. So without wasting much time, let's get started. So what do you understand by decision theory? In every sphere of our life, every day, we take decisions. Like for example, even right now, you might be deciding on or thinking about whether to skip this video altogether and go to some other video on YouTube or whether to continue with this and uh, take it through completion, right? So that's what every walking, waking minute of our life, even while at times, um, even while sleeping, we take decisions. And we take various kinds of decisions. Therefore, it becomes very important to critically analyze and understand the decision-making process. Now, a necessary condition for the existence of a decision problem is the presence of alternative ways of action. You open YouTube, you come to Anu's classroom, you have clicked on this video. If there was no other alternative, there are no other channels on YouTube or there is nothing else that you could do on that particular day. Neither you have any Prime account or Netflix account or uh, what you can say, any, any good programs on the TV. There are no alternatives. Then to kill the time, you might stick with my video. But if you have alternatives, if you don't find my content engaging and you find that somebody else's content is much more engaging and you have the means to go and look at that content rather than wasting your time over here, then naturally that means that you have alternatives. And so what will you do? You will pick up that alternative. And if you have that alternative, then only the entire, what you can say, the entire concept of decisions come into your life. Now, each action or each alternative that we have, okay, each action of us, it always has a consequence associated with it, right? Through a possible set of outcomes. So, you have this half an hour or you have decided to spend 15 minutes on YouTube. Now, we have come to this channel, you are listening to this uh, about decision theory. You can, at the same time, spend this exact same 15 or 20 minutes that I will be taking up in this video to spend and spend it on some other video maybe some netflix series or you might catch up on some something else okay maybe some movie reviews or whatever that is or maybe even play a game now whatever is the alternative that and whatever alternative that you have chosen to pick up that always comes with a consequence right i'm really sorry about the background noise if you can hear it um there is some procession that is going uh, through my front i mean uh, in front of my house and that is the reason why if you are being distracted by it i'm extremely sorry um, so, as we were talking, each action leads to a consequence through a possible set of outcomes. If you have decided to spend your 15-20 minutes on this video or maybe some other educational content, then naturally that's going to help you uh, learn more about MBA or about the decision theory and things like that. At the same time, if you have chosen to watch a movie or catch up on some series for that exact same number of minutes, then uh, that effect would come naturally when you are going to write your examination or when you're actually having to use your knowledge in a practical sense, right? So they all come with alternatives and um, consequences. And so I hope that you have understood the uh, premise, whole premise of decisions. Now, as we said, right, we have a problem which needs decision. Uh, this problem can be broadly divided into two, two types. First is the deterministic, where we know the outcome, okay? of our actions or of our decisions with certainty so one of the few things that you can see is if you do not study uh, then it will become very difficult to ace your term and examinations right if you do not give a uh, dedicated time for subjects it, be, it will become this difficult so that is an outcome that is known with certainty or it could be probabilistic where we might um, we might know the outcome but we do not know the exact probability of uh, actually having that outcome that probability may be known or unknown like um, for example uh, what example can we take uh, suppose say I am an entrepreneur okay and I have set up a shop and I have put out a flyer or I have uh, put out a, a posters and I have created a new advertisement that is uh, in hopes of attracting more customers into my shop now um, how many customers would actually come 
how much of a sales increase can I expect? We can all have probabilities of these things, right? But we can never be sure of exactly how it is going to work out uh, before it actually is put into practice, right? For example, Tanish, um, uh, like a little while back, there was a big controversial ad uh, that Tanish put out, right? And Tanish had to actually withdraw the ad. When they actually created that ad, naturally they might have done their research and it might not have been a simple, uh, what you can say, decision without much thought behind it, right? Pe graduates from IAMs, people with lots of years of experience would be heading that uh, uh, enterprise. And they all decided and they put out the advertisement. But then uh, there were mixed responses from the people and in order to avoid a controversy, Tanishka actually withdrew the ad, right? So such, uh, what you can say, decisions, they are actually probabilistic decisions wherein the probabilities of your outcomes may or may not be known with certainty. Now, what are the few key issues in decision theory? So, some of the few key issues that we have to face while we are taking decisions is whether our decisions are independent or dependent. That is, whether are they are single stage decisions or are they sequential? Is it like I take this one decision and be done with it? Or should I, uh, after I take the first decision, should I have to take more and more and more decisions? Like for example, you have 1000 rupees with you. So there are a few alternatives, right? You can spend that 1000 rupees and go watch a movie or you can go and uh, buy something for you. Now, if you have chosen to watch a movie, again, that is not a single stage decision. You have to again decide which movie. Should I go for an English movie? Should I go for a Hindi movie? Should I go for any other regional languages movie? Okay. Uh, now again you have chosen maybe okay fine English now you will see should I go to Nehrul should I go to PVR should I go to Inox should I go to IMAX or should I watch it in Netflix should I watch it in Amazon should I watch it in Hotstar lots and lots of decisions so these are examples of sequential decisions wherein each decision is dependent upon the previous decision right so they are uh, what you can say sequential decisions but at the same time you have decided to spend that thousand rupees on uh, let's say in, um, yeah, you have decided to spend a thousand rupees to get you a pair of jeans. That is a single stage decision. You go to your favorite shop, you take again over here. This is also like most of the time the real world decisions are not single stage. They are always in, they always have multi stage interdependent decisions. But let's say you always wanted to go to um, say studio or maybe West Side or. You always wanted to have a, let's say, Louis Vuitton bag and you got 10,000 rupees. So naturally, it's just one decision. You go to Louis Vuitton, you're going to get your bag. That's it. So that's a single stage decision. You spent your money and that is it. Done with it. So that is an example of a single stage decision. But most of the case, uh, most of the time, as I said earlier, the decisions that we take in real life are rarely single stage decisions. They are most often sequential decisions. Now, the other... Um, key issue while we are taking decisions is as we said every the concept of having to make a decision itself arises when we have alternatives now from these alternatives what should be our criteria for choosing a particular alternative other than the next like why did you choose if you have decided in our earlier example while we are going to watch a movie why did you choose english movie why did you not choose hindi why there might be many many reasons maybe your there are no good Hindi movies that released this year uh, at that but at that point of time or uh, you really like uh, Tom Cruise and his movie has come out or you are a really a uh, big fan of let's say um, the Avengers and Marvel and they have decided they, and their movie has come out so naturally your choice would be that uh, or you are not actually in the mood for going outside and watching so you are sticking with Netflix or Amazon things like that so what exactly is the selection criteria for choosing the alternatives among the various alternatives that we have? So that is another a key issue or a key thing that we have to take care while taking decisions. What should be the selection criteria? Now, the third is, uh, are the outcomes and their probabilities of occurrence known or unknown? That is whether the problem is a deterministic problem or a probabilistic problem. Now, based on these issues, we have uh, key issues. We have the following decision theory approaches. Okay, so if it is a single stage decision problem, we can go for the marginal analysis. If it is a sequential decision problem, then we can take decision trees to arrive at our decision. Then the selection criteria uh, for that 
to determine the selection criteria based on which our decisions should be based out of we have the preference theory and we also have some other approaches for problems where probabilities are unknown okay so marginal analysis or decision tree, tree approach all these things are uh, when we take uh, these things are undertaken when we know the probabilities of our outcomes for sure if we do not know then there are a few other approaches which also we will be discussing on later on so what is marginal analysis marginal analysis is an examination of the additional benefits of an activity compared to the additional cost that is incurred by the same activity and companies use marginal analysis as a decision making tool to help them maximize their potential profits like for example say if the company has a room in its budget to get or hire another employee and therefore is seriously considering on hiring another person to work in the factory now as a manager you will be undertaking a marginal analysis okay that and the uh, objective of that analysis is to uh, decide on whether hiring that person will provide a net marginal benefit this means that by uh, what you can say by adding to your uh, expenditure of salary are you actually going to get more benefit out of that additional resource or are you not okay or uh, is it that you can promote the existing employee with a fraction of the cost that is associated with hiring another employee and maybe you can get the same work done by motivating them so what is the marginal cost versus the marginal benefit if the benefit outweighs the cost then only you should hire another employee otherwise you should not hire right so that is marginal analysis the next is the decision tree approach decision trees actually i uh, think of them as you know family trees or the trees okay so what is it there is a root of all problems and then from that root we have the trunk coming out and from the trunk we have many 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 branches right uh, a bigger branch will have many other sub branches and in each of these branches may or may not end with a flower or a leaf or a fruit right so same same is the case with decision trees also so decision tree analysis involves making a tree shaped diagram to chart out a course of action or a statistical probability analysis it is used to break down complex problems okay into many many branches and each branch of the decision tree could then be a possible outcome this decision tree tool is used in real life in many areas such as engineering civil planning law and business so in case you guys are like me who had come to this mba after finishing your engineering or btech or b or uh, after working as an engineer definitely at the time when you did your graduation at that time you might have learned decision trees it was there for us while we were under the calicut university uh, we had decision trees and that was the first time i was uh you know uh, introduced to this quantitative techniques and things like that yes we had studied maths statistics graphing and probability and everything while we were at school but uh, uh, you know um, a serious approach to practical application of all these things was introduced at that time we had a paper i guess in the third semester or fourth uh, not third semester i guess in the third year maybe fifth or sixth semester we had this paper so that definitely i think um if you guys have come from a btech background or be background engineering background definitely you might have learned decision trees while at college if not also don't worry i am here with you and i have uh, tried to make this whole concept as simple as possible without losing out on any major information so decision trees okay decision trees they are very commonly used in operations uh, research and specifically in decision analysis to help identify a strategy that is most likely to reach a goal but are also a very popular tool in machine learning also now decision trees are of two types first is the categorical variable type like for example it is a yes no or it's a male female like that categorical or it could be continuous like height age income such things blood pressure all those things okay so there are these are the two different types of variables in decision trees the categorical variable and the continuous variable so what we have over here is a very 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 simpler stick uh, decision tree example okay uh, we have a lot of symbols like so uh, like uh, we have circles on uh, diamonds and rectangles and stuff like that which we use while we are doing uh, drawing actual decision trees but uh, for mmpc 
perspective we actually don't have to go into all those uh, details of where we draw a sim, uh, circle or where we draw a rectangle or where we go for a triangle or a rhombus and things like that we don't have to go in deep into it so that is why i am not going into that right now but in case you are interested in learning more about decision trees leave a comment below if i get enough responses then i'll definitely consider making a video on that okay so for our understanding basic understanding of what a decision tree is let us think about it okay uh, should we go out and play that is our that is our question which we need that is our decision problem which we need to take a decision so one of the things that we first go uh, first consider is what is the weather three options it could be sunny it could be overcast or rainy okay so if it is sunny then we go and check how humid it is right is it high humidity then maybe no i might sweat a lot it's not going to be good for my health later on so i'll prefer to stay indoors but if it is normal humidity then definitely yes if it is overcast also i might go and play if it is rainy then we might look at how strong the rain is is it windy is it thunderstorms are, are there or not and depending on that if it is a strong wind or it is very strong rain then we will not go but if it is a light rain it's just drizzling you think that it might go in maybe like 15 20 minutes or even half an hour one hour then definitely we will uh, plan on going out and play right so this is a very simple example of a decision tree just for your basic understanding coming to preference theory preference theory uh, provides a systematic way of measuring the consequences on a preference scale which reflects the decision maker's attitude towards risk it assumes that most of our decisions center on our prior behavioral knowledge and particularly on our routines like for example if uh, i sleep at 10 o'clock at night every day then will i go for a second show which starts at 9 no i won't okay so naturally if i am planning to go out also i'll try to come back by 10 that is how the entire decision is my decision is going to be centered around that one preference of mine right or if i'm I, if i am a vegetarian then also my hotel choices or eating out choices whether uh, which hotel to go which men uh, which dish to order all those things will be uh, centering around it if i don't like sambar much then naturally i'll not be ordering stuff which comes with sambar right maybe i'll go uh, i'll maybe order a puri or a chole bhature but i might not prefer ordering idli or if i so you got the idea right so preference theory now moreover the preference theory postulates that decision making is primarily guided by the affective reactions that are elicited by the alternatives under consideration so simply put preference theory it means giving priority to something okay favoritism choice of decision makers if i don't like idli then i'll definitely not be going into saravanagon and ordering idli right if i don't like sambar i'll not be going into saravanagon and ordering maybe dosa sambar or even maybe not even meals right for that matter i might order fried rice or maybe even vegetable biryani but i'll not order the regular meals because i don't like sambar or if i want paisam with my meal then naturally i'll decide on you know dealing with sambar to just get the paisam if i if there is no other way to order a separate paisam so that is that's the same that is the simplest way to understand preference theory just giving priority to our choices or our whims and wishes and favoritisms being partial that's preference now a few other approaches uh, which we take in order to make decisions especially when probability of outcomes are unknown are a criterion of pessimism so criterion of pessimism is also called the maxi min criteria okay pessimistic means what you think negatively right so that is the same thing criteria of pessimism it suggests that decision maker will examine only the minimum payoffs of alternatives and chooses the alternative whose outcome is the least bad like for example if you are a very conservative investor okay and you've got your in your hand say 1 lakh rupees now share markets are there fd is there then you have mutual funds you have ulips all these things are there now if you are a conservative uh, investor and you are following this criteria of pessimism then you will only be putting an fd why because at any given point of time since you are only having 1 lakh rupees even if the bank is dissolves you will as per rbi mandate get your 1 lakh rupees back right so choosing fd in such a case is you employing the criteria of pessimism next comes the criteria of optimism that is the maxi max criterion 
and it suggests that the decision maker will examine the maximum payoffs of alternatives and choose the alternative whose outcome is the best okay so it appeals to adventurous decision makers who are attracted by high payoffs so in our example of 1 lakh rupees and the choice of putting an fd or investing in the stock market or putting it into a ulip or mutual funds if you are somebody who goes by the criteria of optimism there are high chances that you might decide to invest in the stock market yourself rather than putting in mutual funds or ulips and if you are not that optimistic then maybe you will prefer mutual funds but definitely you will not go and put yours money in an fd why because you are looking at the maximum benefit you are, you can get and you are trying to uh, uh, decide based on the uh, to uh, put your money in wherever you are going to get the maximum payoff in the pessimistic criteria you are trying to get the minimum uh, what you can say minimum certain uh, return and optimistic criteria you are trying to get the maximum possible return but it comes with risk next comes the criteria of regret that is the mini max uh, criteria where the aim is to minimize your maximum regret okay like for example if you are a person who has a sweet tooth okay and you have three choices in front of you you are craving for sweets you have three choices in front of you one is a extremely de delicious mango the other is a uh, Uh, I don't know whether you like it, but I am a big fan of pralines and cream from Baskin Robbins. So that is the next. And you also have your mother's homemade kheer, or maybe your grandmom's special kheer. Okay, three things. If you go by the criteria of regret, you will choose maybe the mango or maybe your homemade kheer, but definitely you will not choose Baskin Robbins uh, pralines and cream, or or uh, you will not be choosing a you know a rich dense uh, cake. right why because you want to reduce the regret that you would have at a later point of time if you were to choose the option so i would say going 100% with the criteria of regret you will be choosing the mango because it will sat satisfy your sweet tooth and also you will not be considering consuming as much calories as the other two options right next comes the subjectivist criteria okay so that is basically our own mental activity okay and it's like uh, in the same sweet tooth example okay so mango is the option that is the having the least regret but you may choose to have your homemade kheer instead of the mango and you might have your own reasons for it like it my grandma made it with love she did not put that much sugar in it once in a while the kheer is not going to hurt and it's not as unhealthy as you know baskin robbins ice cream all those things right so instead of choosing the mango if you chose um what you can say mm, the kheer or in our uh, money example in our previous example rather than putting it in share markets you chose mutual funds or maybe you chose ulip okay then that is completely your own subjectivity okay so that is subjective criterion so instead of a shared or communal goal there is um, like it is like this approach is the choice of decision is it is purely subjective to the decision maker so i might choose mango you might choose Uh, your kheer or you might choose kheer or, or or you might choose a cake while you might choose a cream cake while i might choose a plum cake and say that plum cake does not have cream on it so things like that so that is the best example i could think of of the subjectivist criterion while you know daily life decision making to drive home the point or try to help you in understanding or wrapping your head around what this kind of different approaches mean so in case you want the slides to this uh, video then i will uh, put them uh, put the link to it in the description down below and you can get the notes from there and if you did like uh, my classes if you liked the video consider subscribing if you have not uh, make sure you hit the bell icon so that you don't miss an update on the next video that we post we have a lot of courses and contents already in the channel as well as planned for the upcoming days So thank you very much and uh, until I see you in the next video bye bye